This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to sign up using the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. With Ukraine's application to join the EU gathering momentum day by day, talk has inevitably turned to the other states in the EU's waiting room, most notably Turkey. Turkey has famously been wanting to join the EU for decades, with their proposed accession often mentioned by the Vote Leave campaign during the UK's Brexit referendum six years ago. So why is it taking so long? And why have the likes of the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary and Latvia managed to leapfrog into the EU whilst Turkey remains in line? To properly understand why Turkey is still not in the European Union, we need to turn back the clock. Turkey has had an incredibly long history when it comes to trying to join the EU. Turkey originally applied to join the European Economic Community, the precursor to the European Union, as an associate member back in July 1959, just one year after the EEC was even formed. At that time, there were just six members of the EEC, known affectionately as the Six. Belgium, France, West Germany, Italy, Luxembourg and the Netherlands. Following that application, the EEC decided to, rather than negotiate associate member status, negotiate an association agreement to prepare Turkey for full membership. This is why, in September 1963, the so-called Ankara Agreement was signed between the EEC and Turkey, establishing a so-called association. The agreement saw three stages of association between the EEC and Turkey. A preparatory stage of about five years, a transitional stage that would see the creation of a customs union within 12 years, and then a so-called final stage, which would essentially involve integrating Turkey into the EEC. The association agreement explicitly envisaged Turkey becoming a full member of the community, which is why, in 1987, Turkey applied to become a fully-fledged member of the EEC. At the time, the EU denied that Turkey lacked a, quote, favourable environment, which is a polite way of saying that Turkey's poor relations with Greece and Cyprus and its ongoing war with Kurdish groups in the southeast made accession impossible, and so decided to defer negotiations. In any case, Turkey continued with the Ankara Agreement and, in 1995, agreed on the creation of a customs union between the EEC and Turkey. From that point onwards, things sped up significantly. Within two years, the European Council declared Turkey eligible to become an EU member state, and then, two years after that, in 1999, declared Turkey a candidate country. After that, a formal accession partnership was adopted, and the accession process began, with negotiations formally opening in 2005. Initially, things looked good. In order to join the EU, a country must negotiate and close 36 chapters on everything from freedom of information, IP law and taxation, to justice, the environment and social policy. Turkey quickly negotiated one of these chapters, Chapter 25, which relates to science and research. But when Turkey essentially refused to recognise Cyprus, the council decided to freeze negotiations on eight chapters. And since then, not a single chapter, other than science and research, has been closed. And whilst both parties have recently tried to reinvigorate the negotiations, not much has changed, and if anything, are getting worse. Back in 2019, after the publication of the European Commissioner's report on Turkey, the European Parliament voted to suspend accession talks with Turkey. The European Parliament cited serious concerns over Turkey's poor track record in upholding human rights, the rule of law, media freedoms and the fight against corruption, as well as its all-powerful presidential system. Whilst the vote didn't actually lead to talks being suspended, as the Parliament doesn't have the power to do so, it was a hugely symbolic move and put immense pressure on both the European Commission and Council not to proceed any further. In 2021, the European Parliament then voted again to suspend talks, this time by a larger margin, 480 MPs in favour compared to 370 back in 2019. At this point, Turkish accession was looking less likely than ever. October 2021 also saw the European Commission publish its annual report on the state of play regarding Turkey. In the report, the Commission notes serious deficiencies in the functioning of Turkey's democratic institutions, with the President continuing to centralise and consolidate power in such a way as to prevent a, quote, sound and effective separation of power between the executive, legislature and judiciary. 
The report highlights the decision by Turkey's constitutional court to uphold the decision to close down Turkey's second largest opposition party and the president's dismissal of the governor of Turkey's central bank, which has since been repeated. Anyway, all of this raised alarm bells for the commission. Because, rather than getting close to the European ideal of rule of law, human and civil rights, and so on and so forth, it appears that Turkey is moving away, and doing so at an alarmingly quick pace. Then, just last week, the European Parliament passed yet another bruising resolution on that October 2021 Commission report. That resolution noted that in spite of repeated statements by Turkey, over the past two years, the country has consistently gone back on its commitments in relation to the accession process. Specifically, that Turkey remains vastly distant from the EU's values and normative framework, a gap that is actually growing in fundamental areas such as respect for international law, the rule of law, human rights, individual liberties, civil rights and freedom of expression. The official appointed to oversee and report on accession proceedings, Nacho Sanchez Amor, went as far as saying that if there is no change, I can hardly see the accession process surviving another five years. Anyway, you get the idea. Turkish secession is looking increasingly unlikely, and their recent decision to block Swedish and Finnish accession to NATO won't have helped. So how could this change? Well, this probably depends on the outcome of Turkey's next general election, which is due to be held in 2023. If Erdogan and his AKP party lose to the more secular opposition, then it's possible that momentum might swing back the other way. Nonetheless, even if Turkey changes direction, EU accession still looks difficult. Turkey is unlikely to concede on the issue of Cyprus, and Turkish accession to the EU has become such a bogeyman for Eurosceptics that both Austria and France have said that they would need to hold a referendum on Turkish accession, which would be unlikely to pass. All in all, odds of Turkish accession looks unlikely anytime soon, and especially while Erdogan is in charge. But if that probability doesn't sound right to you, then you ought to check out Brilliant. Brilliant is an online STEM learning platform where you can learn everything you need to know to better understand the modern world. In fact, that's kind of what TLDR is all about too, taking complex subjects that seem scary from the outside and turning them into something more understandable, and in turn, making the world a less daunting place. And understanding STEM better could mean all kinds of things for you. It could help you thrive at work, improve your grades at school, or even just help you learn something exciting and new. No matter what your reason is, taking some time to learn with Brilliant is a whole lot more fun than the boring computer science lectures that I had to take at university. There's no long talks and no textbooks. It's all about interactive experiences that have been put together by experts in their field to help you learn by doing. So if you want to take your next step with STEM and support the channel at the same time, then you can sign up to Brilliant. Then you'll want to use the link in the description and the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for supporting the channel.